This season, you might notice some changes to how many climbers your favorite country is sending to World Cups. And that's because this year is the debut of a brand new quota system to determine how many athletes each country is allowed to send. Some countries won't see much of a change, but other national teams will send many fewer climbers to the World Cups this year, my home country of Canada included. That sucks. So why are we excluding more climbers? Well, comps are getting way too big, in terms of participation, at least. Qualification rounds in Boulder and lead events have become way too long, in some cases lasting 12 hours or longer, where the first climber is competing in the morning shade, someone in the middle of the round is climbing under the sweltering sun, and somebody at the end may, in the early evening, be experiencing a cold, torrential downpour. And think of how long you'd be sitting in ISO if you had to wait all day. And think of how long your coaches would be parked in front of the wall waiting to watch their entire team climb. And how many more volunteers you need to judge. And how much less time the route setters have to prepare for the next round. Qualifier rounds at World Cups, World Championships, and Youth World Championships are all getting unmanageable because more and more countries are sending more and more athletes. We clearly need to make a change. So, what did change for this year? Well, let me get the World Championships and the Youth World Championships out of the way, because not much is happening in 2023 at least. These changes are still pending, so for this year, it's going to work the same as it did last year. At World Championships, each national federation gets five athletes per gender category, plus any reigning world champion gets an invite on top of that. For Youth Worlds, it's three, three per gender, three per gender per category per age, I don't watch a lot of youth climbing anymore. But the World Cup is going to see big changes starting this year, beginning in Hachioji. To start, let's compare with how the system worked last year. Previously, each national team could send five athletes to each World Cup. This was the bulk of your team. And P.S. When I say athletes, I mean five athletes per gender per category, okay? So that's five male boulders and five female boulders, five lead male climbers and three female lead climbers. You know what I mean? In addition, any of your athletes who finished in the top 10 of the previous season received direct invites, so they didn't count towards that initial five. And finally, the host country of each event got to send an extra five climbers to their home World Cup, which usually meant five extra chuffers being added to the running order, but it's a nice thing to do. It supports the locals and it brings out a few extra spectators, so why not? And that's your team. The best in the world get a direct invite. Each country sends at least five athletes if they can afford it, and the host country gets the guarantee that one of their own finishes in last place. So what changes are we making for this year? Well, we are slashing the baseline quota and making more spaces available based on performance. Each country now gets to send only two athletes by default. The National Federation picks these however they want, whether that's through a comp or a ranking or a wise coach oracle hybrid, however they like. And just like before, any top 10 athletes from last year get a direct invite to this year's events, so they don't count against your two spots. On top of this, countries can earn up to three more spots based on how their team did last year. If you had an athlete placed between 11th and 40th in the relevant ranking, your national federation gets to send an extra athlete. Two climbers in that window, two extra athletes. Three climbers or more, three more athletes. These are called additional quota places, and it's important to emphasize how they're different from extra quota spots. Those extra quota spots are given directly to the top 10 climbers who achieve them, whereas the additional quota places are given to the National Federation, and they can be assigned however the team sees fit. They are not assigned to the climber that achieved that ranking last year. And finally, the host country gets to invite extra hometown climbers, but only four rather than five. So who benefits and who loses? Well, stronger countries can send just as many athletes as they did before. The direct invites to the top 10 haven't changed, and if enough of your climbers finished in the top 40 last year, your country ends up with five spots just like before. Countries like Japan, Germany, the USA, not much is going to change for them. But it's the smaller countries like, for instance, nearby Mexico, who usually can't afford to send their entire team to most World Cups. 
So when the World Cup does arrive in, say, Vail or Salt Lake City, someplace close to home for them, they send the biggest delegation that they can, trying to max out those five spots. This year, they're going to be forced to send a much smaller team. But maybe that's okay. It'll certainly help manage the logistical challenge of World Cups, and it's always been debatable whether or not a World Cup is a good developmental opportunity if you're only going to score zeros anyways. But we'll only know for sure once this season gets started and we get to test it out. So what do you think? Is this a good change? A bad change? Let me know in the comments, or if you've watched to the end of this video, you should join the Plastic Weekly Discord. Check the description box below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next one.